Hello, and welcome to Basic Electronics. This is a video series that will be starting, that will be happening on the weekends on YouTube on my channel to help you learn electronics. I just started electronics a year ago and hope to help all those who are new to electronics with stuff that I learned, tips, tricks, circuits, etc. So, some of the circuits that we're going to be building in this series go from anything, including door alarms, noisemakers, even simple stuff like flashing LEDs. We're going back to the basics for all those who are new out there. But there's also some fun, kind of complex stuff. So, let's get started. Now, one of the first things I got, build my circuits, and this helped me a lot. We're going to build a lot of circuits off of this platform. It's the Electronics Learning Lab by Radio Shack. It costs about $70 from their store, or you can order it off of their website, I believe. But what it does is it contains all sorts of parts to help you build electronics. You can from four resistors to buttons, switches, speakers, all sorts of stuff. But it's also got a breadboard in the center. That's what we will be using most of the time. Now, if you don't know what a breadboard is, here's what it is. Here's a better view of one, smaller one. It's pretty simple. It's a board with holes in it. Now what are the holes for, you might be asking. You put wires in, we'll just set it down right here. Grab a wire. So you take a wire or a component and you punch it into one of the holes. And you can build your entire circuits off of this. It holds very well, but it's simple enough to pull out with your fingers. Great, very handy to use. So, also, electronics are use a lot of wire. Now, everything on the right four boxes came with the Electronics Learning Lab. I think it's close to a hundred wires. Everything in that small section I made myself with some scrap that I had lying around. So. If you are not going to buy the Electronics Learning Lab, which is an option, it's very simple to make your own wires. All you do is you spend uh, five to ten bucks on a spool of solid core wire, 22 to 24 AWG, American Wire Gauge. Solid core wire has an advantage over stranded wire. Stranded wire is made up of several small strands. Solid core wire is made up of one strand. They each have their advantages. Stranded core is more flexible. Solid core, core is easier to use with a breadboard. So, since we're going to be doing a lot of breadboarding work, solid core wire is a necessity. Unless you want to spend a bunch of time trying to twist the strands together to make it fit into the breadboard easily. Now some components like speakers and stuff have stranded wire attached to them already to make them more flexible, and that's okay. You can work with it, but it's just hard to work with. So, components. Basically the bread and butter of electronics. You need it. You can't do anything with electricity without it. Now, the Electronics Learning Lab comes with all sorts of parts. Not everything that you see in this box is from the Electronics Learning Lab. Some of them, some of the parts here I've scavenged from dead circuit boards or have got from other kits in the past. But anyway, it comes with capacitors, resistors, transistors, uh, piezo earpiece. I've got some potentiometers and some four resistors, LEDs and diodes. Uh, what else do I have? And I've got some buttons and switches. Also, something that comes with the electronics learning lab are chips. I believe there are 17 chips that come with the electronics learning lab and all of them are very handy. You could only have 17 chips. They gave you the ones that you would need. They're your necessities basically. Oh, another quick thing on wire. Alligator clips. They're very helpful. I'm not going to go into them too much. But what they do basically is they Got a it's a, just a wire, simple wire, got a clip on one end, and a clip on the other end. And you can clip them to 
components to make easily attach them to a circuit board to connect them together. All sorts of stuff. They're very helpful. Now we're going to get into some basic tools that are needed to build these circuits. I'll start out with the most helpful and go into the kind of optional stuff. So, if you can get one tool, you could only get one tool, wire strippers. They're a must. If you don't, they're a must if you make your own wires. And they're, all, they're also very handy to have, even if you only buy the electronic sewing lab, nothing else. Wire strippers help a ton. They've also got wire cutters on them. They're blunt pliers, they're okay. They're adjustable to several types of wire. Very helpful. They're an essential. Also, another very important thing, I kind of fill in the void that wire strippers don't have needle-nose pliers. Needle-nose pliers are better at straightening component leads and pulling wires out of a breadboard, putting wires into a breadboard if you have to, that type of thing. Very helpful overall tool. Now, another thing that's kind of helpful, not a necessity, but handy to have around, just a simple knife. This is a utility knife. I can change the blades out. Razor sharp. Nice to have. Wire cutters. Pretty simple. Cut wires. That's what all they do. Nice to have. One last thing, or one last tool that we will do a couple episodes on. Soldering iron. Soldering iron is a must if you're going to try and scavenge your own parts. Now, I have probably 30 or 40 dead circuit boards from various things. And I couldn't use any of the parts from them without a soldering iron. I'll find an example really quick. One second. Like this. This is from a model train. Uh, I think it's a speed controller or something. Add two voltage regulators and a couple of big diodes. LED, some jacks on it. Big, big uh, potentiometer. All sorts of stuff. And I wouldn't have been able to do anything out it with, with all those parts unless I had my handy. $20, 20 watt soldering iron. If you're going to be doing any soldering, a nice thing to have around are your helping hands tools. They can just sit on your desk. They've got two clips on them. You can clip circuit boards to them. It'll hold them. I didn't actually clip them because I don't have any free hands right now, but I'll show you those more in the future. And one last thing before we go. This video is getting longer than I wished it did, but this is all vital stuff that I'm telling you. Safety goggles. Not a must have, but they're nice to have to protect your eyes because you only get one set of eyes. Especially if you're going to be doing soldering and also if you're going to be doing any sort of, uh, if you're going to be doing any sort of, if you use a Dremel to cut circuit boards, because some parts you can't get with just a soldering iron, you'd have to cut them away from the board. You don't want to get dust from circuit boards in your eyes. It's really bad, and the goggles will prevent that. So, tune in next time, which will hopefully be sometime this weekend, or maybe uh, even middle of this week if I have time to make a video. Then I will. Have a nice day. This is kind of this is number one of the series. Hopefully, there will be dozens more coming. Have a nice day, and goodbye.